Hey guys, my name is Pankaj Rawat and today I am going to discuss how you can implement uh, exponential backoff when you are processing Amazon SQS messages using Lambda function. Okay, there are many way uh, you can implement exponential backoff and but when you will <clears throat> implement exponential backoff using a Lambda function, uh, you don't have any out of the box solution but there is a different uh, way you can implement and today I'm going to show you one of that uh, way how you can implement uh, exponential backoff uh, retry mechanism in your Lambda function and without doing any code changes okay and this strategy is a, uh, I feel is a helpful when you don't want to change uh, your existing code but you are ready to add extra resources uh, in your uh, Amazon account or AWS account okay so let's jump into that uh, strategy what I'm uh, going to show you today okay so this is uh, my strategy to implement an exponential back off okay recently uh, when I was working in one of uh, you know assignment where I was reading a message from a SQS and later I need to implement exponential back off and I, I did a, some POC and figure out there are many way but this is a one of the way here you don't need to do any code changes in your existing lambda function implementation to implement exponential back off and so uh, uh, the first queue here you can see the primary SQS here you are getting messages from your publisher okay so this is the primary queue where you are getting all the messages and you you put a listener uh, to a lambda function so the, here uh, is a one lambda function which is listening to primary sqs okay and i have not uh, put a you know uh, retry means i'm not uh, uh, processing a message if it will get uh, get fail due to any reason i will directly move into a dlq and i have set up primary sqs dlq is primary sqs2 so for this queue uh, primary sqs2 is my dlq so i am moving uh, messages after one attempt uh, i am moving message in this one if the message will process at the first time I will not move I will simply delete it but if message will get failed I will move message into a primary SQS 2 okay and here I have a uh, visibility timeout is a 30 seconds so it, it means the message will move into a, another queue or dead letter queue after 30 seconds and this dead letter queue again listen by that same lambda function which will uh, uh, work same as a previous one uh, it will try to process the message if uh, message will get processed it will delete that message if it will not process successfully it will throw error and the message will move to another queue which is a primary sqs3 here i have put uh, visibility timeout of a 60 second so uh, it means um, the message will move into a primary sqs3 after a one minute okay and the same I did uh, with SQS 3 here I have increased uh, visibility timeout is a two minutes so message will uh, process and if gets fail after two minute it will move here here I have increased that two minute to a four minute again the same thing will apply here and then uh, in the fifth one I am uh, doing the same and processing the uh, uh, message through a same lambda function if it get fail it will finally move into a dlq so all uh, these are the dlq but the difference between the last dlq and other dlq is uh, uh, here uh, we don't have any listener uh, because uh, if there is a, some issue in the message there is no point to retry after some time or after certain retry we need to finally put the message uh, in a DLQ where uh, user can directly go and check that message is it a problem of a message with a message or is it a problem with a code or is it a uh, transient problem right so those kind of things uh, is there so uh, this is the last queue uh, last dead letter queue where we will put a message and uh, here uh, then the manual intervention is required and here we can put a some kind of uh, you know alerting mechanism so whenever uh, we will reach a x number of message in a, this dlq it means user need to come and check those messages so in this strategy you don't need to 
do any code changes for a lambda function because the lambda function code whatever you have written to listen the primary sqs that will remain same for a, all the different sqs and that uh, visibility timeout will uh, you know help you to extend the time of retry okay so this process uh, though this is a one of that uh, strategy which i am suggesting but uh, uh, this is may not fit for uh, all the scenario because here uh, one catch is uh, based on number of retry exponential retry you need to increase your number of queues so many people are not agree to uh, you know create that uh, that number of uh, sqs because in project in, i have seen in a many uh, in a one uh, one project you may have a multiple queue and for a one queue you are adding a five to six dl queue based on your retry right so if you have a multiple queue and you want to implement same in a multiple queue so you have to create a lot of uh, uh, lot of sqs second uh, problem is uh, uh, this strategy is not fit uh, where you have a high number of uh, volume of messages because uh, what will happen uh, sqs has a limit uh, sqs can hold 21k 21000 message in flight so it means uh, if you are moving the messages after one retry in another queue so here uh, in the fourth queue and fifth queue it will take a maximum time and messages will um, mostly move if uh, there is some error in a lambda function mostly message will move into a primary sqs 4 and 5 and and if the message is more than 21000 then you will start getting error okay so this is a one of that limitation but uh, uh, if you have a less number of queue and you are okay to add uh, multiple queue for your DLQ purpose, yes, definitely you can use. And now I will show you a demo how I I have implemented this. So here is my AWS account. I have created one lambda function. Name is a sample lambda function two, and uh, I have taken a, a .NET as a C sharp as a my choice of language for a lambda function but you can use any language because uh, I have not done any specific code uh, to retry or process a message I have taken a sample lambda function uh, which is come in a default uh, with the visual studio template okay so this is my sample lambda function now you can see this uh, lambda function is uh, listened to five different SQS so here is a five different SQS. I already have created a five different SQS. I will show you at that configuration in a minute, like a primary SQS, two, three, four, five. So all five uh, SQS listen by the same Lambda function. And I have given a permission to uh, read uh, messages from SQS. So we can see in the permission section. So here I have given a SQS permission. So as of now, just for a demo purpose, I have given a full permission on a SQS uh, instead of the, uh, giving that uh, least permission. So AWS always recommend to give that least permission, uh, right? But for a demo purpose, I have given a full permission in all SQS. So this Lambda function can read uh, messages from all the five different queue. And apart from that, I have given a permission to read and write, uh, you know, CloudWatch logs. Okay, and then in the code side, I will quickly show that code. Okay, so here is my Visual Studio, and I have uh, created a Lambda function named Lambda function exponential back of two. And when I'm getting a messages, uh, and I'm just uh, you know iterating over that messages because uh, here we are getting a messages in uh, uh, messages number of records in array, and then we uh, I'm trying to deserialize that. First, I'm printing that log and then trying to deserialize. If there is a deserialization issue, uh, message format is incorrect. That time I will throw exception, right? I, I'm not handling that exception. And if the message uh, is a valid format, I will simply print that message and mark complete. So I have not done any code for a you know uh, retry or uh, uh, any other thing. This is a very simple. Uh, um, code to process message you can choose any of uh, uh, your choice of language now uh, I will jump into a SQS side so in SQS side I can show you I have created a six different queue one is a primary SQS and uh, uh, and then I have created a, a, a different uh, DLQ to further um, process the messages and this is the last DLQ where actually we will not process the message and put a messages for a permanent uh, hold 
right and here the important thing when I was uh, creating like is when I was creating a primary SQS so I have given the another queue uh, like a primary SQS 2 as a my DLQ the same way uh, for a SQS 2 3 is a DLQ for 3 4 and 4 uh, for a 4 uh, SQS 5 is a DLQ and for a last queue we have a DLQ right apart from that uh, I have given a different visibility timeout setting so here you can see the visibility timeout for a primary SQS is a 30 second after that uh, in a each queue I have uh, increased that uh, you know just double like a 30 second 1 minute 2 minute 4 minute 8 minute and in a last uh, queue we are not going to process the message so I uh, kept it here default and all the queue um, you know can uh, we can process message only once so this is the setting uh, when uh, I, I was defining dead letter queue so I have already given that maximum receive count is one for all the queue okay so here is my queue setup here is my lambda function setup now I am going to test it okay to test that functionality what I did I have sent a one uh, you know uh, invalid message in my primary SQS and then message this message is a process by the lambda function and when lambda function is uh, when lambda function throw error uh, the message is moved into a different dead letter queue and at last it uh, reached to a primary uh, SQS DLQ so you can see that uh, you know message uh, available is a one because it uh, has taken uh, some time to move in a different queue and uh, finally it deliver hit here and let me show you that message what the message I have sent so send and receive message I can pull that message okay so we have a only one message and here is this is a uh, test message one so in my code uh, you have seen like I was deserializing JSON um, so this is not a valid JSON so definitely code will throw that error and this is an invalid message and my function has thrown the error and after that uh, you know move into a different uh, dead letter queue and uh, finally it reach uh, in, in a final DLQ and I can show you that by log as well so here is my CloudWatch logs so you can see I have sent a message a uh, test message one so receive message from uh, test message uh, one from uh, a lambda function so here uh, you can see the when I receive a message first time in my uh, in a lambda function through a primary SQS so here the time was a 1258 uh, 43 uh, right uh, so this is a hours and uh, then uh, then after a, uh, after a 30 second uh, the message is into a second queue uh, which was a primary SQS uh, 2 and here uh, there was a delay in a 30 second and then you can see uh, that next uh, one is a difference uh, between a time is a one minute and the next one is a two minute and then four minute and after uh, four uh, eight minute it was delivered to a final DLQ so this is the uh, result you can see how we have achieved uh, exponential back off using a, a different dead letter queue without doing any code changes yeah that's all for the today's video and we'll catch up with some other topic in the next video. Thank you.